This is a 1988 Buick Riata that one of my friends picked up for, you know, next to nothing. The paint is all faded and nasty, uh, as you can see on top. Um, but it is, these were neat, I guess. It is a two-seater hard top. Later they made uh, convertibles. Um, it has the, you know, the GM um, 3.8 liter six cylinder that everything had at this point like, from this era. It has four wheel disc brakes. It has like an aftermarket dual exhaust or not aftermarket, but like custom dual exhaust. It is straight piped. There is no center muffler or cat or anything like that. Um, it actually runs excellent. Um, but the cool thing about these is the dash, all right? So these were supposed to be like, you know, the, the flagship Halo model for Buick in the 80s. He picked this up, it sat for a long time, so the left rear caliper was stuck and leaking, so we replaced that, rebuilt it, replaced it. You can see there's a fresh caliper in there. Um, the left driver's side pop-up headlight was broken. The little armature was all uh, stripped out. So I actually filled it with some weld and then re remade the slotted hole. And that works fantastic now. The interior is a little beat. The seats ripped up. The steering wheel had like this nasty cover on it that he is uh, gonna replace or whatever. But the, the cool thing about these, so it has 100,000 miles on it. So probably the most unique thing about this car is this little guy here. It's a digital touch screen that basically takes the place of the climate controls and the radio and, and offers a couple other little features. So remember, this car is a 1988, which was the first year of the Riata, I believe. This technology debuted a little earlier, I believe, from like a Riviera or something like that, but it is wild. So I'm gonna, starter up so the first thing it does it lights up like everything um and then so digital digital speedometer time mileage fuel gauge um cool little button here zooms into the last quarter of the fuel gauge so if you're like me and like to run your car down to like nothing that's for you right there so one of the things on the digital dash, there's this test button, which is pretty wild, is in that it illuminates every like dummy light kind of thing. One of the things I want to show, you see that on the, like right here, it comes up in like a brighter green. It says C Diagnostic Center and points to the right. So a lot of times you get a message there basically telling you to check the, the Diagnostic Center, which is really the, the funniest thing on this whole car. Um, one other cool, really cool part of this is there's this metric button that uh, literally converts everything. So now it's to kilometers, speed up, kilometers, kilometers per hour, and even the temperature controls went to Celsius. Um, the like the even like the efficiency stuff is liters per kilometer. So literally everything changes which is pretty pretty wild and um but right this is really the, the actually there's before we get to this guy there's some wacky other wacky things so there's you know fog lamp button pretty standard fuel access but the glove box button watch this i'm gonna hit it because everyone needs a glove box that ejects with that kind of force um I don't know, I think that's kind of hilarious. Because, you know what I mean? That's what we all need. Um, there's a headlamp retract button, which lets you, I guess, articulate the, the pop-up headlights without turning on the lights. So in case you're gonna park in the snow or ice or something like that for the night and you want them up to stay up. The lights, I mean, the, the switches are just insane because there's a light on button, parking light on, but a different light off button. Um, 
it's just wacky. There's just the same thing with the wipers. There's on, low, off. Um, but the coolest thing has to be this center control, which is touchscreen, and it works very well. So it was originally designed with a four-digit year, so it was Y2K compliant. Um, so this is the rate. Uh, no, this is kind of the, the summary setting. So there's these six buttons around it that kind of let you go through. But so radio. Um, funny thing about this is you notice there's a tape deck, but there's no buttons around the tape deck. But there's an eject button here. So we'll back up a little. There we go. So I can put in my tape deck. So literally a digital button for the tape tape deck. Um, it's pretty like crazy. So there's all the presets, the stuff you'd expect, but there's actually this graphic equalizer, which is, I mean, look at it. This must have been a nightmare to program in the middle, mid eighties. Um, yeah. So it, you know, you can scoop out the mids, whatever. It's, it's just crazy. Um, so that's the radio. There are some other like, uh, more in-depth videos of these things on uh, on YouTube that you could check out. But uh, the climate control, right? Pretty straightforward, which is which is all here. Um, cool thing. So the summary was like a little bit of everything: radio, temp, everything. Uh, gauges, which is probably my favorite, which is the tachometer, oil, volt, and temperature gauge. So the tac is real time. Uh, again, I think is fantastic for the 80s. Um, options. So this has some wacky stuff. So this compass reading, this compass came from the Riviera and he, the previous owner somehow uh, ported that module over and you know, the, the actual direction changes as you change direction. Um, there's this whole trip monitor and reminders. So you gotta remember, 1988, no GPS. So this kind of mimics GPS. You could basically set, you know, I'm gonna go 100 miles, 105 miles, and then like ping me, like set an alarm. Or you could set alarms based on dates. You could set alarms on, on uh, like I said, distances, time, go off in like an hour or so so it's kind of weird because if you think about it that's how you used to travel at this time like that's how you used to navigate you'd be like all right i'm getting on i 90 west and i need to be do that for 300 miles or i need to do that for two hours notify me once that's up right so kind of this whole weird convoluted um way to kind of navigate when you didn't have gps and that's what I said. That's what the, the reminder piece was. See, like, view. You could set dates for your reminders. It's just really weird stuff. And like I said, you can see that these uh, the touchscreen is responding very well. Um, the other cool thing is the status button. So you could go through, set tone, set um, brightness, set the clock. But there's this diagnostic button, which... Okay, I hit. And it actually will kind of go through everything. So if I say check engine, it's gonna go through. Charging system's good, engine temp is good, oil pressure's good. Um, cruise control has been disabled, there's an issue with it. So there's the message and it's, and it's all its monochrome green and black glory. But yeah, I mean, this is pretty wild stuff cool thing is the car came with an extra one of these in the trunk and it's actually made by Zenith and I don't know if everyone knows but Zenith was like the last American TV manufacturer so it's got the dual exhaust yeah that was like spliced in here it's some, it's a custom job okay and then so it's got a transverse leaf like a Corvette <laughs> Yeah, it's a transverse leaf. Look at that big sway bar. It's, there's like no rust on it. 